Okay, welcome back to our notes for the unit on kinematics. And if you believe it, we've only really got one more physics topic to talk about in kinematics. However, before we get there, we have to talk about another math topic. And this math topic is particularly important because it shows up a lot throughout the rest of the year. And it's not, uh, there's no math in here that you haven't ever done, but you're going to be doing it now outside the context of a math class. What I'm talking about are how what I'm talking about is how trigonometry is related to vectors. We'll start off with something easy. Given one side, 20, and two angles, 34 degrees and 90 degrees, of this right triangle, how would you find A, the third angle, up here? Well, a lot of people would tell me very quickly that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So all we have to do is take 180 and subtract 90 and subtract 34. 180 minus 90 degrees minus 34 degrees gives us, oh, that's not an amount of money. I don't know what I'm doing that for. 56 degrees is the measure of A. Now, how would you find X and Y, the horizontal side and the vertical side, respectively? What a lot of people would tell me is, oh, use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where C squared is this, and A squared and B squared are the sides. That's great if you know two of the sides already. We only know one side, so we have to resort to something else. We can actually use trigonometry to do this. And I could do this with either the 34 or the 56 degree angles. I'm going to choose to use this angle right here, the 34 degrees. The reason I'm going to choose to use that is because it's kind of standard in most physics problems that you will see this year, that any angles that you use in a problem are measured in reference to a horizontal line. Horizontal meaning flat, okay, not vertical, up and down, side to side. Horizontal means side to side. This 34 degree angle means from this horizontal side to side line up to the hypotenuse, that's a 34 degree angle. That's the angle we're going to focus on. So, how would you find x, the side that is horizontal? Well, let's review your trigonometry. You probably learned the phrase SOHCAHTOA back when you were studying trigonometry. And what that means, it's, it's a group, there are groupings of letters that help you remember which side names go with which trig function. So, here, I'll even write it for you. SOHCAHTOA. So stands for sine is opposite over hypotenuse. CAH is cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And TOA is tangent opposite over adjacent. Okay? All the sides of a triangle have certain names depending on which angle you're looking at. For the 34 degree angle, the adjacent side, adjacent means right next to, would be the side that's labeled X. It's right next to the angle. Y is the opposite side because it's opposite. The, it's, it's on the opposite side of the triangle from the 34 degree angle. You have to go all the way across the triangle. 20 is the hypotenuse because that's the longest side of the triangle and that one doesn't change depending on which angle you're looking at. So to find X, the side that's horizontal, that's the adjacent side. So I need to use one of the trig functions that has adjacent in it. That means an A, so it's either cosine or tangent. Depending on which other side I know, I know which one to pick. I know the hypotenuse in this case, so I'm going to pick the cosine. So what I'm going to write down is the cosine of 34 degrees, that's how this works, you do the trig function and then the angle, equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse side. That would in this case be x over 20. I wouldn't pick tangent because that would be opposite over adjacent and I would just have y over x and that wouldn't help me solve because I have two things that I don't know. I can rearrange this by solving for x. I can solve for x by multiplying both sides by 20. So this would end up looking like this. x equals 20 times the cosine of 34 degrees. Now everyone's calculator is a little different, so you have to learn how to work your own calculator. For my calculator, what I do is I type 34 in and then I hit the cosine button. That will tell me what the cosine of 34 degrees is. That's a number that it spits out based on a function. I then multiply that by 20 and I get 16.58. That is what x is equal to. Okay. Essentially, we know that that's what it's equal to because if this angle is 34 and this hypotenuse is 20, 
x must be 16.58. That's what the trig tells us. We do a similar thing to find the side that's vertical. Since it's vertical, this is the opposite side. I need a trig function with opposite in it. Now, because I know x, because I know the adjacent side, I could use sine or tangent. I'm going to use sine because that doesn't require me to use the number I just calculated. If the number I just calculated is wrong and I use tangent, that could throw everything off. But I'm going to focus on using just the measurements I was given. 34 degree angle right here, 20 is the hypotenuse. You might be saying 20 watts, and you're right, I didn't put units on it. You can imagine meters, you can imagine any units that uh, would work. I'm gonna rearrange this, and I get y equals 20 times the sine of 34 degrees. 34 sine times 20, that gives me 11.18. So that's what y is equal to. So you just found those side lengths very easily by doing, I like to call it baby trig. It's not even hard trig. It's the basics of what you learned a long time ago. Okay. Now, this was for a triangle. You might say, oh, well, this is a math problem. Well, we can extend these skills to help us with vectors. And we want to use them because these skills can help us when vectors are not in simple directions like horizontal or vertical. Okay. Take a look at this vector down here. It's 10 centimeters at 55 degrees. Any vector, okay, in any direction can always be broken up or split up into what we call two component vectors. A component is a part of a whole, okay? So like if you're talking about like components to an engine, it's the little parts that make up the engine as a whole. Separately, they're components. Together, they make up the engine. So any vector can be split into two component vectors that when you add them together using vector addition, return you to the original vector. These vectors, and this is very important, are called the x-component vector and the y-component vector. What they do, and this is the key, you have to understand what this means. They show the extent of the original vector in each direction. So take a look at this picture here. We have a 10 centimeter vector. I know it's not really 10 centimeters, but let's pretend. A 10 centimeter vector at a 55 degree angle. If I break this up into X and Y components, into a horizontal and a vertical component, this is what it would look like. Here's my original vector. This is the exact same picture. Here's a 55 degree angle. The X component would look like this. It's the extent of the original vector in the horizontal direction. The y component is the extent of the vertical of, of the original vector in the vertical direction. Okay. What we want to do is we can use trig to find the x and y components of the original vector. In other words, if this original vector was 10 centimeters at this angle, how big is the x component? How big was the original vector just in the x direction? How big was the vector just in the y direction? We can do that by doing the same process as above. We find the cosine of this 55 degree angle, and that must be equal to one side over the other. Again, this is the x, this is the y. If I take the cosine of 55 degrees, remember cosine means adjacent over the hypotenuse, adjacent means next to, so this side is next to the angle, I get x for the x component over 10 centimeters. I rearrange this into x equals 10 centimeters times the cosine of 55 degrees. Again, how I rearrange this is I just multiplied both sides by 10 to get x by itself. 55 times the cosine times 10 is 5.74 centimeters. Okay, The units of the components are always the same as the units of the original vector. I can do the same thing for the y component. In this case, this is the opposite side, and I still know the hypotenuse, so I'm going to use the sine of 55 degrees. That's equal, I know I'm cramping my writing here, y over 10 centimeters, opposite over hypotenuse, equals y, or y equals 10 centimeters times the sine of 55 degrees. And that's 8.19 centimeters. Notice that the y component this time turned out to be bigger than the x component. And if you look at the picture, the y component looks a little bit longer. If you go back up here, the x component looks a little bit longer, and that turned out to be more. So I'm sensing a pattern here. In almost every situation, in order to find an x component, you are going to use cosine. 
and in order to find the y component you are going to use sine. And that's actually shown to you right on the reference tables. So far, we have talked about the first five equations, okay? Definition of average speed, definition of average velocity, and the three kinematics equations. The next two down are equations that show you how to break something into components. Ay equals A sine theta, Ax equals A cosine theta. A, it says, is just any vector quantity. So Ay is the y component of a vector equals the size of the vector, the magnitude, multiplied by sine of theta. Theta is the symbol for angle, okay? That's a Greek letter theta. It's like a zero with a line through the middle. Ax means the x component of a vector equals the magnitude of the vector times the cosine of the angle, okay? So these equations are right on the reference tables for you. It tells you that x components are found typically using cosine. Y components are typically found using sine. The only time that, that is not true Okay, the only time that that's not true is if you have a vector that is not measured relative to a horizontal line. For example, if you want to measure, measure using this, if you want to calculate using this vector, which is measured relative to a vertical line right here. But we're not going to have too many of those. Just keep on the lookout for it. And in that case, you can't assume that cosine and sine are going to be x and y, respectively. All right, let's find the x and y components for the following vectors. So the x component of, uh, let's see, 7 centimeter long vector at 20 degrees, let's write down our equation. Ax equals A cosine of theta, theta being the angle, remember? Ax equals 7 centimeters times the cosine of 20 degrees. And if, again, if you're wondering why I'm using this equation instead of starting from here, essentially I'm just skipping a step. Remember, if you start from here, cosine of 55 you're going to end up multiplying both sides by 10. So you get the size of the vector multiplied by the cosine of the angle. I'm just skipping forward and writing that equation down. Okay, nothing wrong with that. 20 cosine times 7 gives us Ax equals 6.58 centimeters. Okay, Ay equals A sine theta. That would be 7 centimeters times the sine of 20 degrees. Two point three nine centimeters. And again, take a look at that. The x component, I could draw this in. The x component is the extent of the original vector in that direction. So there's the x component. Here's the y component, the extent of the original vector vertically. And you see that the x component is much larger than the y component. That kind of makes sense. For this one, I'm going to predict that the y component is going to be much bigger than the x component. It's a 14.3 centimeter magnitude vector at an angle of 77 degrees. By the way, you'll notice that I am labeling each angle. Please make sure you put the degree sign on all of them. So Ax equals 14.3 centimeters times the cosine of 77 degrees. Three point two two centimeters. A y equals 14.3 centimeters times the sine of 77 degrees. And yes, we see that our y component is much bigger than our x component this time. This last one's a little different. Take a look at the direction of that. The other two had positive and or had positive x and y components. I wonder if this one will. Remember, most of the time we want to measure our angles from the positive x-axis. If this angle right here is 50 and I want to measure from the positive x-axis, that's this angle right here. The whole thing would be 180 degrees. So 180 minus 50 is 130 degrees. I'm just going to tell you this, okay? This is a hint. Always, always, always measure angles from the positive x-axis when you can, okay? Ax equals A cosine theta. Ay equals A sine theta. Ax equals 24 centimeters times 100, oh, the 
cosine of 130 degrees. A y equals 24 centimeters times the sine of 130 degrees. Watch what happens when I find the x component. It's negative. Now, there's a very simple explanation for that. Why is it negative? Because if we use our standard axis where x is positive to the right and y is positive going up, this has a positive y component, or it should, but a negative x component because the x component um, is to the left. Okay, The x component will look like this. Y component up like this. Still a positive y component, negative x component. Okay, So if we measure using the angle from the positive x axis, that means that we're going to get our negative component just like we expect. Watch what happens if I just use the angle they gave us, 50, which is not measured from the positive x-axis. I get the same number, but it's positive. Okay? You would have to think in your head, wait a second, I know that this is in the negative direction. You would have to remember to put that negative sign on there. So my point is, it's much, much better to always measure your angle from the positive x-axis. Even if this says 50 and you notice this isn't from the positive x-axis, try to figure out what the angle would be from that positive x-axis. Trust me, it's going to make your life much, much easier when you're trying to figure out if x and y components are positive or negative. Like we said, though, the y component of this should be fairly straightforward because it looks positive, and it is. 18.39 centimeters. Okay, so that is how to find x and y components. All right. Um, I think I'm going to stop there actually and then I'll continue with the rest of these notes in another video. It'll probably take me two more videos to get all the way through vectors and components. Okay.